Hello and welcome to a quick run through of the Software Central product. Software Central controls and extends SCCM via its own user friendly interface. It's web based, so accessible anywhere, and you can use Windows credentials to log in. There are a few places where Software Central supports templates in order to reduce repetitive selections and help with consistency. Here you can see computer templates are provided to answer several OS level questions, such as operating system, computer naming, locale and time zone settings, as well as what software group should be included and which role should be permitted to administer the computer. We can pre-stage a computer so that it gets the desired installation of Windows and any applications when it comes online. You can optionally choose a template and then specify how the computer is to be named and identify the hardware by Mac or GUID. You can also import computers for multiple computers at the same time in a similar manner. The next menu item we see is applications. This is where much of the heavy lifting takes place. Launching the application wizard, we again have a template we can start with to define some common parameters. Next, we need to provide the source of the installation. Here you can either create a folder and upload the source to that folder, or you can upload a zip to automatically create the source folder with the archived contents. We'll provide admin script editor. I've got a zip file with the installer inside here. So we'll select that as the source of the application. Next, we can dictate how the application is to appear as well as the installation and removal parameters that you can discover online at a site like appdetails.com. Next, we'll specify what to look for to qualify the application is installed. With an MSI, Software Central will automatically suggest the presence of an installed MSI by its product good, but as this is our installer wrapped in an executable, we'll have to take the extra step of telling the system what to look for. This could be any number of things, but in this case, we'll look for the ACE executable. The application is now available for deployment, and taking a quick look in SCCM, you can see that it is performing the necessary tasks behind the scene to ready this application for deployment via SCCM. The patching menu really just exposes existing functionality in the Software Central user interface. So I'll skip going into this here, but the main benefit is that you can use Software Central's security roles to dictate which groups of admins do or do not have this capability. Licensing is an area where Software Central adds to the native capabilities of SCCM. I'll add licensing information to our new admin script editor application to show you. It will track how many deployments of the application are performed and you can optionally block additional installations from taking place. This can also be date-based, where you specify an expiration for a license. You can then have the system send you a notification so that when there are so many licenses remaining or so many days left before a license expires, you can be notified to address it proactively. In settings, there are a couple of things worth highlighting as well. You can leverage role-based security features to control which tasks users of Software Central can perform and over which systems. You can name and define the scope of the role. You can choose SCM, SCCM collections, queries, or OS task sequences that are relevant. On the Software Central side, you can dictate which menu items will appear, as well as which templates are permitted for the role. And there's also an AD management interface I'll show you in a bit, which you can restrict to the level desired. There's a ton here in Software Central, and I've written a review that provides a lot more details that you should see. But another thing that I wanted to show off here is the ability to visually modify the HTA script that provides the interactive form used when in a manual system deployment scenario. You can ask for the information you wish, enforce other information, etc., and you can do so without any knowledge of scripting. A preview option lets you see what the resulting UI will look like so that you can be sure to get it just right before rolling it out. Of course, there's a log view. This is well done and provides several filtering capabilities as well as a search. Uh, there's also two tabs so that you can help focus on all events logged or just those performed by you as the current user. Status view lets you get a close look at any single system and offers some nice insight via links for system information, which includes high level information, including the online status, and a check to see that WMI is responding. 
Next, you'll see there's also a link to a remote task manager where you can see what processes are running and optionally terminate any of them. And lastly, you can see there's a resource explorer, which lets you check out hardware and software on a remote system and even a hardware history to help you identify changes that may have taken place. All very helpful troubleshooting tools. A reinstall feature lets you rebuild one or more systems. As in many places in Software Central, you'll see there are separate menu options for the manipulation of a single machine or to perform an action on several machines in bulk. While this does clutter the menu system to some degree, it also gives you the option to prevent some admins from being able to make changes to several computers in bulk, which can be beneficial. The reinstallation task shows you what the current assignments are for the machine, and you can modify this. You can also choose the computer template or operating system independently. Uh, this will completely rebuild the machine. So there's an option here to migrate data, um, which leverages USMT. And like many tasks, this can be triggered right away or scheduled as desired. Clone feature is not an imaging feature, but lets you simply copy the OS and software specifications of one machine to another, which can be a real time saver if you're in a situation where you want to set up a new machine in the same way an existing system has already been established. Poor menu allows you to assign software to a single or multiple machines. You can see what's currently assigned and the status of those tasks. There's also links to view a log of the task, to rerun the task, or to remove an application that's already been installed. A status is provided for each task so you can track its progress and identify any failures. This too can be scheduled. And another Software Central perk I didn't mention is that there's an option to lease software, that is, to have it installed and then automatically removed after a specified number of months. A D menu allows you to review and manipulate Active Directory. Here you can see that users can have their passwords reset here. There's also a self-service password reset feature I go into in more detail in my written review. This menu exposes remote control and you can also add your own tools or scripts here, which again is something given more value when you consider the ability to allow or restrict the execution of such tools via Software Central roles. Reports are something else I won't go into here for the sake of time. This simply exposes reports that exist within SCCM, and it isn't introducing any additional functionality to highlight here. Finally, there's an App Store feature, which I'm sure will interest many. This really goes beyond an App Store when you consider that you can also put scripts in here, making the store a potentially powerful service catalog. As you'd expect, it's a simple add to cart and checkout interface, an optional approval workflow can be specified, and so SCCM can either immediately or once approved execute the associated task, such as a software installation. It's fairly configurable in that you can specify categories and groups as desired. You can also customize the header, in which case um, you can make it reflect your company or brand. It's empty here in this test environment, but in addition to an email capability for approval, there's also this approver view that lets one see any pending approvals so that they can be approved or declined as desired. You can, of course, choose what titles are to be exposed in the store, and you can specify several details such as price, if it's to be leased for a set number of months, if any details need to be provided by the user as part of the request, and all the items can be categorized so that they're easier to locate. There are also some store reports that can be quite valuable. As I mentioned, there is a written review that I have produced along with this video, which I encourage you to check out. I've got a link to this in the video description. If you have any questions about this product or would like to hear more, please contact me via appdetails.com.